you need to take two slices of bread and stick them on your ears, and that's what you've got. An idiot sandwich. Gordon Ramsay is known for his devastating insults on his television shows like Hotel Hell, Kitchen Nightmares, and Hell's Kitchen. However, the people on Ramsay's shows know what they're getting into. They've signed up to take his abuse. I haven't got time to Benjamin. Move your ass. And possibly get burned. <laughs> What about the people who just try to get Ramsey's attention on Twitter, though? If you can't deal with classic Gordon Ramsay insults, then definitely don't show him your amateur cooking. Even when people are obviously joking about their food pictures, it's clear that Ramsey is totally fed up with it. These are 10 more of the best Gordon Ramsay insults from Twitter. Bon appetit. Bon appetito. Gordon Ramsay insults a poorly seared chicken breast. That's how you cook chicken like a true master chef. Pan searing a chicken breast to perfection is one of the simplest and finest things you can do in the kitchen. It requires very little skill beyond knowing how long to cook your chicken breast so it is, one, not burned, and two, not dry. Mostly dry, I can accept. Dry and edible, I can't. It really shouldn't be that hard, but clearly this person's friend deserved all the ire that Gordon Ramsay felt like he needed to throw their way. As far as Gordon Ramsay insults go, this is one of the simpler ones, and yet the beauty of the insult is in its simplicity. Intimate? It it stinks like cow Ramsey doesn't have to say much more than what this person did to a nice piece of meat, which is to say, they screwed it up. Did this person's friend ever find out that they showed a picture of their culinary disaster to the master of the food-based insult? If they did, they might not want to be this tweeter's friend anymore. You stop calling me f***ing mate, yeah? Yeah? That might be for the best, though, because then they don't have to eat any more terrible chicken breast like this one. The lesson is clear. You should only be friends with people who know how to cook. Find someone who can make you a good meal and be nice to them. That's a great life lesson. I didn't cook them. The two chefs put those dishes together. Liking this video so far? Hitting perfection is the mission. If you haven't done so yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button and ring that bell to be a part of our notification squad. Yes, 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 yes. Gordon Ramsay insults chunky, authentic scrambled eggs. What is that? Dry. What is that? Like a seared chicken breast, scrambled eggs are something that everyone should know how to cook. They're quick, easy, and with the right care, they are completely delicious. I'm lost for words. Great job. However, they're not always photogenic, no matter how good they taste. The camera loves me, Robin. This person's authentic chorizo and eggs might be the most delicious thing anyone has ever eaten, but there's no question that it looks pretty bad on camera. It is physically impossible for me to take a bad picture. You can't really blame Gordon Ramsay for not really getting into this or asking where the authenticity is. You're happy to be a fake chef, aren't you? No. One of the big rules of cooking and fine cuisine is that presentation is everything. What the hell is that? If you're not immediately appetized upon looking at a dish, then you're not really going to get into it. This person might have done better to wait until the dish was finished cooking and plated. At least then they could organize it into something that looks somewhat palatable. Making scrambled eggs look good isn't entirely impossible, but if you're trying to do it while they're still in the pan, you're going to have a hard time impressing anyone, let alone Gordon Ramsay. Seriously, I've seen more appetizing diapers. This dish could also also use a little more color, maybe some chives or fresh herbs to brighten up that look even just a little, because right now it's not looking so hot, even if it tastes hot. I don't want that sweat pissing on my beef, okay? Gordon Ramsay insults someone's stoner meal. Smells of a business that's run by stoners. <laughs> Sometimes people are just asking for it, you know? Like this guy, for example. Come on, hit me before I lose my nerve. He clearly knows that Gordon Ramsay insults most of the food he sees, and he must know that his dish here is going to get skewered pretty badly. You have to do this with me. You have to taste that. He doesn't take any precautions in making his food look appetizing or even presentable. First, he leads by calling it a stoner meal. That's a bad start already. Well, that's not good. You don't want Gordon Ramsay to have any ammunition when he insults your food, so telling him that you made it when you were stoned is not putting your best foot forward. Next, the photo is dreadful. The lighting is awful, the food looks hastily put together, and everything is just an absolute mess. Look at the mess. This leads Gordon Ramsay to tell this person that he feels stoned just looking at this plate. He's a magical. Can anyone really blame him? This dish is just so incredibly terrible, it could make anyone question their mental state. You're crazy! 
I'm not crazy. In the future, it might be better for this person to keep their stoner meals to themselves. They can just throw on Dark Side of the Moon, chill out, and eat their weird, gross food out of sight of everyone else. Maybe it will help them reconsider their life choices. Kids. Don't do drugs. You'll end up like that. Gordon Ramsay insults somebody's fake poutine. It doesn't look appetizing. I'm sorry, Canada. Like we've said before, some food is just not photogenic. Usually, that includes poutine, or at least anything that resembles the French-Canadian combination of fries, gravy, and cheese curds. Even the word curds isn't very appetizing. This looks really bad. And yet, this person truly thought that they would impress Gordon Ramsay with this messy-looking plate of probably frozen fries covered in cheese and gravy. In this instance, they also threw in some green onions for color, so they get the slightest bit of credit for that. It looks appetizing, and the churros actually taste quite nice. However, this isn't even real poutine, because it foregoes curds for just plain old shredded cheese. Also, if that isn't a white cheddar, then this person used mozzarella, which is pretty sad considering how mild of a cheese it is. If you're going to make some kind of culinary mess like this, unforgivable. At the very least, use a sharp cheddar or something. Gordon is right to utilize the appearance of the food for this particular insult. There's no question that this kind of thing could cause someone to have, let's just call it digestive distress. <laughs> Hopefully this person learns that you can't just throw together things people like, such as fries, gravy, and cheese, and it's going to be amazing. You have to do it with a little bit of nuance, talent, and know-how. I watch you cook and I just get so pissed off with you around. Gordon Ramsay insults YouTube and their disappointing guacamole and bagel. The quality is really poor. They just suck. No one is safe from the barrage of Gordon Ramsay insults that find their way onto Twitter, not even something as big as YouTube. Run! It's Godzilla! In this instance, they took it upon themselves to show Gordon what they had come up with, and despite the fact that YouTube is a huge corporation, Ramsay holds nothing back in his appraisal of their culinary skill. I'm disgusted at your performance. What's really disappointing here is that YouTube can't even get it together enough to make a fresh guacamole. Is it so crazy to think that YouTube would have access to some fresh avocados? It's hard to say. What we will say is that an everything bagel with jalapeno and cheddar sounds absolutely amazing, and we would all like to know where to get one. Getting back to to Ramsey's insult, though, he cleverly utilizes a phrase associated with streaming services in general to ultimately throw an insult at YouTube, which, by the way, is a platform that Ramsey has utilized to share his own cooking videos. Hopefully, they stay friends. Friend has quickly become foe. Gordon Ramsay insults a meal for a mother. Mom! Have patience, boy. When you're making a meal for your mom, you have to put a lot of care into it. We all know this, so why is it that someone decided to give their mom this particular meal? What are we even looking at in this photo. Our best guess is that it's hash browns topped with a craft single, which is then topped with scrambled eggs. This person has to be joking, right? Are you kidding me right now? They can't possibly think that anyone, let alone their own mother, could really enjoy this. Um, I'm gonna wish you good luck because I think you're gonna need it. When your mother makes a meal for you, she pours her heart and soul into it. She works so hard to make sure that you're eating something hearty, healthy, and delicious. She picks each ingredient with care and knowledge. This is just something that looks slopped together from leftovers in the fridge. Gordon Ramsay is right to insult this one, if only because it's meant for a mother who probably deserves a whole lot better. The lesson here is that if you're going to make something for your mom, maybe stick to a macaroni picture or a poorly made clay bowl. If this is the kind of food you're going to be churning out, then you deserve the wrath of Gordon Ramsay. That is well done, sir. Stop bringing me shit! Gordon Ramsay insults eggs that were fried into a blue. Libyan. You're cooking in a burnt pan, you once again, we come to the problem of cooking eggs. It's such an easy thing to do, but it's also an easy thing to screw up. That is the worst dish I have seen on a plate. Hence the scorn that Ramsay seems to reserve for people who don't seem to know how to do it. He can't even boil a fing egg. Now, a nice brown, crispy ridge on a fried egg isn't inherently bad. In fact, it can add a little bit of texture and flavor to your eggs that you wouldn't be getting otherwise. However, the key is to cook the eggs so that you get the brown, crispy edge without completely overcooking and decimating the rest of the egg, particularly the yolk. The holy grail of fried egg is crispy edge, runny yolk. This person clearly did not get the memo on that, and it really does look like they cracked these eggs in a frying pan, put them on a stove, and just left 
left them there for way, way... 2,000 years later. Too long. This is the other golden rule of cooking eggs. Don't take your eyes off them. They go fast, and that can easily lead to the overcooked mess that Gordon Ramsay had to look at. As a chef, Ramsay has seen his share of overcooked eggs, and by now, he must be pretty tired of looking at them. I'm left with no choice. I'm done. Gordon Ramsay insults some very questionable lentils. What is that? Boy, you lost the words. There is nothing more simply insulting than suggesting that something someone cooked looks like, well, it came out of a dog. It's the kind of you'd expect Tiger Woods to tee off with. Look at it. Either that or it was meant for a dog, but is one really better than the other? In this case, there really is no right answer. Gordon Ramsay insults can sometimes be vague, like he's asking an honest question, but the intent is clear. Uh, yeah, so me so, me so confused. <laughs> These lentils do not look the least bit appetizing to him. And really, why should they? Judging by this picture, no effort was put into making them presentable whatsoever. They may taste great, but that's certainly not the impression you would get from this image. Disgusting. When all you have is a picture to show your dish to a chef, you better make sure it looks great. This doesn't even have any sort of garnish to give a little bit of color. Even the guy who made that terrible looking fake poutine had the sense to toss some green onions on top to make it look slightly more appetizing. These lentils lentils are just an unmitigated disaster of cooking. If this ended up on a plate in front of you, you might start to think about what they would look like if they were vomited back up. That's not exactly a pleasant thought. Baked macaroni treats with a major twist. And what's the twist? Breast milk. Maybe Gordon was right to pass on these. You smell something, right? Gordon Ramsay insults a 48-hour broth. That has to be the most disgusting soup I've ever tasted in my entire life. Imagine this scenario. You have put hours, no, days into making the perfect soup. You've simmered your stock for so long that it becomes imbued with rich flavors and colors the likes of which most people never get to see in their own kitchen. You pour your heart and soul into what you do, and you come out with a product that you are truly proud of. You think to yourself, this is fabulous. It's called being fabulous. This is possibly the greatest thing I have ever cooked in my kitchen. I need to share this with someone, but not just anyone. I need to show this to Gordon Ramsay. You load up Twitter and you throw your picture up on it and you send it over to Chef Ramsay. Because the only thing you're testing right now is my f***ing patience. As you await the inevitable praise he's going to send your way, you start to consider a career in the culinary arts. Why not? You're a master of broth, after all. How much harder could everything else be? As you are daydreaming about spending hours in a beautiful stainless steel adorned professional kitchen, you get the notification that Gordon Ramsay has responded to your tweet. You open up his reply and you see that he has completely insulted your broth. You give up on cooking, you pour your broth down the drain, and you microwave a Hot Pocket. Where did you heat that up? Was that in the microwave? Oven. No. Gordon Ramsay insults an absolutely disgraceful chicken parmesan. Touch that. It's not gonna bite. Boom! Little known fact, chicken parm is what heaven tastes like. Is it like a real heaven or a Chinese heaven? Chicken parm is one of the great things that anyone can produce in their kitchen. However, when it's not done right, it's not just an unfortunate culinary incident, it is practically an affront to the kitchen gods. I'm God. Bingo! Yahtzee! In this instance, the chicken parm that was made by this person is the latter. Chicken parm should look like a Renaissance painting. The colors, the textures, and flavors should all complement each other, combining playfully on the plate. However, this person's pitiful attempt at chicken parm is just the opposite. It looks like a child's drawing. If I wanted to play with dolls, I'd stay at home with the f***ing kids. And not even one that makes it onto the fridge. Perhaps Gordon Ramsay's criticism of this plate of food will help this person realize that chicken parm is not to be taken lightly. You don't. Yeah. If you're going to do it, then do it right. Hopefully, if people learn anything from these Gordon Ramsay insults, it's that cooking doesn't have to be hard, but it does require some effort to make your food good. So don't neglect your food, follow all of the steps of a recipe, and make sure that you're putting the time, effort, and care into your cooking that it deserves. Otherwise, Gordon Ramsay may be insulting you next. Hey! What in the f is going on? You know we have a part one to this video, right? If you missed it, now's your chance to click on it and get more Ramsey Twitter insults.